terrorist. No, a a terrorist. A, a terrorist in the villa. I was shaking. I said, What? Do you know the meaning of this? That's me. You see the incarnation of Pablo of Soba inside that place talking to Nigerians. That's where we're heading to. So them, thank God. And thank God for having me. Otumba, well meaning. Jimmy, keep blessing. Keep keep putting us on this mood at least. We will we, be we, very angry. We need to be angry because that's the only way for us to take care of this country and take our country back. I yield my mic. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim. All right. Let's just quickly go. Savik. Savik, I know you've been here, so I'm not so sure if you are. Savik, are you there? Wait a minute, please. Text someone else. Uh, just okay. give me five minutes, please. Yeah, I was wondering. Can I go on? Well, meaning. Ah, uh -uh. yes, it's a big. Now you are the way for me. You can you can serve the food. Everybody don't cook since I beg. <laughs> please go ahead, N six. All right. Um. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the auditorium of violence. It's always a pleasure speaking to you guys, and I always want to remind you. This is one of the greatest times to be a Nigerian. If the obedient movement had existed in 2015, based on facts and figures alone, we might not have supported Good Luck Ebele Jonathan, but we most definitely would not have put Mohammed Buhari in power. Facts. My sermon today is titled When Two Elephants Fight. The two elephants fighting are ACN and CPC. And I will break it down why that fight alone also encompasses every single thing we have as our topic. Now, remember, the APC as a party does not exist. It was a gang of criminals who came together and felt, let us bully the Nigerian government of the day, take over power, destroy Nigeria, and feast on its ashes. This was successfully done. The current president at the time, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, was bullied into calling Muhammad Buhari and literally handing him the country before the election results had been counted. It will also bear you in mind that Nyanya Bostop, the Abuja equivalent of CMS in Lagos, was bombed twice under Jonathan's four-year administration, but no bomb ever went off in Abuja under the Buhari administration, even though Boko Haram and bandits have ramped up their attacks to ridiculous levels everywhere else in the north. True or false? True. So it begs you to understand that under Jonathan, there was definitely a Boko Haram problem in the forest, but there was a political Boko Haram that made life uneasy in Abuja to get him out of power. Now, when Bola Metinubu said, it is my turn, it was not the turn of the Yorubas. You see them today, when they are fighting over the Senate House or the House of Reps, they start talking about rotation. It is the turn of the East. It is the turn of the West. It is the turn of the North. It is the turn of the Middle Belt. But these same evil men refused and somehow had amnesia and forgot at presidential level that it was the turn of the Southeast to produce the president. I always like to remind Nigeria of that because based on equity and fairness alone, Peter Obi should be president of Nigeria. But I will digress. Back to the battle. You, the Nigerian, are the grass that these two elephants have been trampling upon. Let me explain. A man called Bola Metinubu saw Muhammad Buhari. Buhari had been rejected by Nigerians. I always like to give you this fact. For 12 straight years. He always ran in elections. Every four years, Nigerians knew he was bad news. Out of every military ruler we have in this country, I always told people that one of the first things that disqualified Muhammad Buhari, first of all, even out of all the military rulers we had, was the fact that Nigeria was a democratic country as at 1982 under Shehu Shagari. He was not perfect, 
It was a nascent democracy we were learning. Buhari was the first military ruler that truncated democracy. Please remember your facts and figures. He was the first military ruler that truncated democracy. After all Olusegun Obasanjo did to take us back to democratic rule. So it's very ironic that this same man, all of a sudden, in 1999, about 30 years later, was uh, 20 years later, was itching to be president. And somehow, men who should have known better, so even this grandchild of Shagari, supported Buhari. But here we are, eight years later. I always say this. One of my biggest problems with the universe and vis-a-vis -vis God in particular is because the Bible actually gives me an answer. The Bible said, <clears throat> a thousand years to man is like a blink. It says it's like a day, but to, I want to just paraphrase. It's like a blink to God. So where God would use my need 200 years to panel beat Nigerians to have sense, I, as a mere mortal, who probably has 60 years of value as a human being before I start to decay, is begging God that I need to see Nigeria make sense in my lifetime. Why? If you follow the trajectory of Nigeria, you would see that heaven is taking its time to barbecue Nigeria. Because the destiny Nigeria has is Nigeria has the tendency, the capabilities and the properties to be a greater nation to the world than China and the United States combined. And if you add, that is just the power of Nigerians alone, minus our natural resources. So, I tell you people, that there's a small victory to enjoy in all of Bola Metinubu's folly. And let me break it down. The ACN promised the CPC, we will continue in Buhari's footsteps. Please remember that the plan for Bola Metinubu was not to come in and change a Mephile. The plan was not to come in and change Hadi Sirika. I promise you the plan was not to come in and suspend any of the, of the service chiefs. Why are these actions being taken? A young lady tweeted on the timeline, Bola Tinubu is working like somebody that's, that has a hundred days in office. And I will say it's actually very, very true. Because when you look at these actions, for somebody... Who, this is where Nigerians became the grass in the fight between two elephants, and it is sad. For the last eight years, Muhammadu Buhari was doing utter rubbish as president of this country. The man was barely literate. He has no proof that he has ever spoken intelligently ever in his life. There was nowhere in mathematics that Muhammadu Buhari could be given a country and he would run. He was barely running a poultry and his cattle farm well in Katsina. But somehow, enemies of the state masquerading as patriots told us that we were mad. With every harebrained and idiotic policy Muhammadu Buhari rolled out back to back, they kept on keeping Nigerians entertained. In the beginning in 2015, I said all this government needed to do was create 52 diversions and release one every week while they keep looting this country. And that was what they did. It's actually very simple, but it took Nigerians eight years to decode that it's all happening in a WhatsApp group of demons. Look at them. Somebody got up in a political strategy where me, Saddam, Otumba, even Omar were linking up to try and create violent space. Somebody in the APC had the bright idea and said, Hello, guys. Do you know where we will start the base foundation of our party, especially on one of the most controversial websites for public opinion? We will go and check for all the people that ask for giveaway. What a satanic idea. It is ridiculous that even a year into this movement, we are still finding giveaway handles of APC members online. You would think that these people might have even typed their name with giveaway and deleted. But no, those, it still shows you the people we handed Nigeria to. Northern Nigeria might hate what I'm going to say, but the facts remain. One of the best things America did to themselves was during the quarrels of SAT in the 80s. Now... There was a time that the southern part of, of America was going through huge economic issues. Detroit was already planning, uh, was already collapsing. And they wondered whether 
should a certain belt line of education in America have a reduced score line for SATs, while certain areas like New York and, you know, the East Coast have a higher um, um, cutoff mark for SATs? And it was agreed at Congress that rather, rather than force the people of the South, New Orleans and all those areas to read and aspire, it will cause them to be lazy. Nigeria employed this strategy in our education, starting from primary school, and woke up 40 years later to wonder why one region seems to just churn out smarter people by quantity. But when you say, let us tweak these things, people will bring up sentiments. Tell me why, as at primary school, a certain portion of the country needs to read harder to pass an exam than a certain other portion. How does that improve overall quality of education. How does that even lead to accountability on Essis, the side Essis, of the Essis, rulers? Essis, please, just give me two minutes, please. Holy, please. continue, sir. See, um, I grew up here, I grew up in Plateau State here, yeah, and ha, ah, God, you just say something that I did, that I want, I'm saying it for everybody to understand. You see, Nigeria, when you set up traps, when you set up traps and you think you're doing your set up traps to, for people, you're, you don't know how you're empowering them. Growing up, when I was re when I was reading for my exams, common entrance exams, I, I got into secondary school at, at the age of eight. So you should understand. I was and I had the best result for my for my set. So my dad then will put me on the kind of reading, the kind of teaching. And I'll be wondering why I had to read two times as hard as my mates. The pressure was something else. He was saying your cutoff mark is higher, and I'm wondering like. What you consider my cutoff mark? Man? Where they, I suppose they maybe if I pass, I pass. Like, no, no, no. They so they they can't they you don't understand what you're doing, Nigeria, our Nigerian elite, with this quota system. You don't understand what you're doing. You are systematically making some set of people smarter than your today, you. Yeah, today we wake up and we worry about a kitty. Have you seen a kitty's cutoff mark in primary schools? Have you seen a kitty's cutoff mark? It's one of the lowest allowed cutoff marks in the southwest. And you wonder why a kitty, as a collective at local level, have a certain trait. But it, look, well, as is wait, you know, you know, you know the sad part of a kitty. A kitty at yes. one point used to be one of the most educated states. God bless you. It used to be God a bless you. of professors, but APC, AD, APC, AC bastardized it as usual. I, I want to remind you people. As an Igbo man, especially from Anambra State, let me continue my submission. One man can terraform an entire tribe. And he does not even have to have military experience. I repeat, one man can terraform an entire tribe. And unlike the 1960s, the 1950s, the 1940s, he does not need a barrel of a gun. Neither does he need military experience. It happened in Igbo land with Namdi Kanu. It's happening in Yoruba land with Bola Tinubu. It was no mistake that in every ANAP poll, Bola Tinubu polled number one candidate amongst illiterates and poverty-stricken Nigerians. I told you guys that this was a metric that people are not understanding because one of the worst people, it's bad look. Society tells a poor man, you are poor, and you are illiterate. It helps the poor man to aspire to not be poor and illiterate. But when you tell a poor man you are poor and illiterate, but you are the president, the poor man does not aspire to be smarter. Rather, he digs deeper into his poverty of the mind and also would barely probably even encourage illiteracy amongst a generation or two of his offspring. True or false? True. So be very careful. We are terraforming Nigeria at national level. Sometimes I go to General Oluchi's timeline and I cry. Like it or not, when we see the amount of dim-witted comments online, 85% of them are from the Southwest. Now, this tells a very, very wicked lie because they are a small minority because when you check the comments, 85% of the positive comments are from the Southwest too. Same with the submissions on the violence space. So, 
like I said, I would never, you see why I went on a preamble of round Nigeria to show you that one man can reform the entire eastern region. We have barely survived it today. To the point that the Supreme Court has said, let a man be legally allowed free. And we all have a conflict of hearts, knowing fully well that this man exercising his freedom takes us back to square one in the insanity in the southeast. And even worse, every prediction of Namdekano came to pass. All that man has to come out and type on Twitter as Nigerians, I told you so. And it will start all over again. You and I know this. Never in the history of this country has the agitation for Yoruba nation been on a rise like it has been right now. So I say this. I always tell obedience. I have a lot of you in my DM. I stop replying. Any of you who has fears on the judiciary, I ask you guys a simple question. What are your academic qualifications? 